Hello guys, my name is Sorin and today I will talk about speaker drivers. I will explain to you how they work and I think the best way to do this is to build one from scratch. Here we go. Everybody knows that this is a speaker driver, but how does it generate sound from electricity? Inside it you have a voice coil made from insulated copper wire like this, which is powered with alternating current from your audio amplifier. So AC going through a coil creates an alternating magnetic field which changes its polarity according to the AC frequency. The voice coil is suspended in a fixed magnetic field created by the magnet you see in the back of the speaker driver. So the two magnetic fields interact and the voice coil is pushed in and out according to its polarity change. I've made a simple prototype coil to test this theory and I'll use my pocket amplifier and a neodymium magnet. The coil vibrates and creates sound waves, but the audio volume is very weak. The closer the magnet gets to the coil, the stronger the vibration. If I push the coil on the table, the whole table becomes a speaker driver and it sounds louder. So I'll glue the coil to a membrane or a cone. Now the voice coil and the cone will vibrate together and the sound will be much louder. But this was a prototype, I want to build a real speaker driver. All the components will be made from what I can find around the house. The speaker frame will be made from a plastic funnel with a diameter of 15 cm. I'll cut the bottom side at a diameter of 8 cm. I need to measure and make some very precise markings. To mark the frame holes I've made the cardboard template. My tiny Dremel does a very good job. And this is the speaker driver frame. In the back of the frame we have the magnet. These neodymium magnets have a very strong magnetic field as you can see here. So they are very good for my project. The magnet will be fixed in the center of a PVC pipe end cap but I need to mark and cut a piece from it because it's too big. Remember to wear protective goggles when using a Dremel or any power tool. The plastic edge needs to be smoothed with a piece of sandpaper. I've made some side holes for ventilation and for checking the voice coil later on. From this 4mm plywood I'll make a ring, it makes it easier to glue the components in the back of the speaker frame. I've made a few circles in the middle of the PVC cap to guide me when I glue the magnet in position. In this video I will use a lot of super glue. The speaker driver is made from many components of different materials and the glue needs to dry really fast. Once I put super glue on a component and place it in position, it cannot be moved anymore. So I need to be careful to place each component in the correct position from the first time. Another plywood ring will be used to make the speaker frame stronger and to help glue the surround later. The trickiest component to make is the voice coil. This is not a voice coil, it's just a beer can, I mean soda can. After you drink the soda, you remain with an empty aluminum cylinder. You remove the paint with fine sandpaper and cut it as straight as you can. Be careful with this thin aluminum sheet, it can easily cut your fingers. I'll measure and cut a rectangular piece from it to make the voice coil former. The former is the tube that the coil is wound around. It can also be made of paper or capton. I'll use a marker and press it to a strong foam sheet to make it rounder. The magnet diameter has 19.4 mm. I need a mold for my coil with a diameter of around 20 mm. This grinding stone bit will do just fine. I'll cover it with a piece of masking tape because I don't want it to scratch the coil former. 
most of us don't have a winding machine, so I will use my small power drill, it has very good precision at low speed. My cheap and inaccurate micrometer shows me that I will use a 0.2mm copper wire for my voice coil. It's recovered from an old and broken transformer. The aluminum edges must not touch each other, so they won't make a closed circuit. There will be a 1mm gap between them. The former must not be tight on the mold. I'll cut a few rectangular pieces from a thin plastic folder and insert them between the former and the mold. These will help to remove the voice coil from the mold when it's finished. To fix the copper wire on the former, I will use two parts adhesive because it dries very slowly. It will take me a few minutes to wind each layer. Apply the adhesive and spread it evenly without excess. And now I can start winding the first layer of wire. The first few turns are the most important because they need to be straight. So I will use the power drill at the lowest possible speed. Now the copper wire will follow that pattern and all the turns will be straight one next to each other. The first layer is finished, now I will apply slow drying adhesive on it and start winding the second layer of wire. Again be careful with the first turns, they will be mounted on the previous layer and they need to be straight so the rest of the turns will align next to them. There must be no gaps between the turns, if there is a problem unwind it and rearrange the wire. Voice coil are made with 2, 4 or 8 layers of wire. I will make mine with 4 layers because it has a small diameter and I want to give it enough wire to have an impedance of more than 4 ohms. If you want to see more DIY videos and updates about my future projects, you can take a look at my Patreon page. The link is in the video description and at the end of this video. For the final layer I've gained enough experience to wind the wire at a higher rotation speed. After the adhesive has hardened, I can take the voice coil out of the power drill. Now the masking tape will be removed and we need to cover the aluminum part with a piece of paper, preferably craft paper. And I will add adhesive over the final layer of wire. My speaker driver will have an impedance of around 5.5 ohms. I would say that's good enough. Now I can remove the plastic strips and the voice coil from the mold. Yes, I know, it's beautiful. I need a spider for my speaker driver. This is the component that holds the voice coil and the speaker cone in the perfect position with the help of the surround. It aligns the voice coil and the speaker cone in the center of the magnet and let them move only in and out, not side to side. It's usually made of cotton and it needs to be very flexible and strong. Obviously I don't have one, so I will make it from this old computer hard disk drive rubber cover. Try saying that 10 times. But you can make it from any rubber or flexible material that you can find. Now that we've covered the speaker spider, let's move on to the speaker cone. I've made the template with different markings and then it was bended until I found the perfect shape. I'll use those dimensions and make the cone from a strong piece of cardboard. Finally, I gave it a few coats of black paint. The speaker suspension or surround attaches the top of the cone to the frame. It lets the cone move in and out, not side to side. It needs to be very flexible, so it's made from rubber or foam. Now, from what material can I make something like this? I'll use this very flexible seal foam tape. This is used to seal doors or windows. I will cut it and use only the rounded side. At first I wanted to glue the surround on the exterior of the speaker cone, but it doesn't fit very well, so I've glued it on the back of the cone.
To center the coil on the magnet, I will use these plastic strips, which are cut from a small plastic bottle. The next component to be fixed in position is the spider. While I apply the super glue, I will stretch each side, so in the end the spider will be nice and straight. To fix the voice coil to the spider, I will use super glue gel, which unlike super glue liquid, this is gel. Yes, that's a good definition. On the bottom of the speaker cone I've made two holes for the coil wires. Now I will glue the edge of the surround to the back of the plywood ring. I will use flexible adhesive to seal the place where the ends of the surround meet. The cone is also glued to the voice coil on both sides. For the speaker driver leads I need some flexible braided copper wires. I don't have that exact type, but I will use this flexible wire with very thin threads. And for the terminals I will use this small piece of copper cladboard. Now I need to insert the flexible wires through the speaker cone and solder them to the coil and to the speaker terminals. I will cover the soldering joints with super glue, so they will be fixed to the cone. Now I can finally remove the plastic strips and test it. The voice coil alignment with the magnet is very good. The speaker driver is not finished, it will sound better at the end of the video. Here you can see the voice coil in action. This is a ping pong ball. What possible purpose will it have for my speaker driver? I will mark a circle on it, then I will cut it to make the dust cover. It will also be painted in black. To find out the polarity of a speaker, just use a simple battery. You can reverse the battery polarity and when the speaker cone move outwards, you can mark the speaker positive terminal according to the battery positive terminal. The last thing we need now is an audio filter, an inductor actually, to remove the high frequency sounds going to the woofer. This is a ferrite rod from an old radio, I've cut a small piece and winded some insulated copper wire around it. It's not a perfect filter, but it's good enough for this project. I also need a tweeter for the high frequency sounds. This is easier to make, I'll use a smaller 5cm PVC cap. The voice coil is made in a similar way, but shorter, and I will use a thinner copper wire. I need two plywood rings to glue the membrane in position. A tweeter audio frequency range is usually between 2 and 20 kHz. To be able to produce these high frequency sounds, the tweeter membrane needs to move very fast. So the membrane is very thin and small compared to medium and low frequency speaker drivers. I'll make the membrane from this very thin plastic cover. And yes, the cream cheese was very good. By now you already know the drill. Cut all the components in round shapes, mark all the circles and use a lot of super glue. I'll cut a small dust cap from a ping pong ball, which is actually not needed. It can even make the tweeter lose some of the higher frequency sounds, because the membrane will become a little heavier. But I think it looks better this way, it actually looks like a tweeter. I move the membrane in each direction and mark the maximum movement point. This way I will know how to glue the membrane in the center, so the voice coil will be aligned with the magnet. I will use a black marker to paint the membrane, and the second plywood ring will be glued for protection. 
The tweeter needs an audio filter to remove the low frequency sounds. This is usually made from a non-polarized capacitor with a value of 2.2 or 3.3 microfarads. But all I have here are polarized capacitors which will burn if I connect them to alternating current. So I will use two of these 4.7 microfarads polarized capacitors connected in series with a common ground. The capacity will be halved, but they will create a non-polarized 2.35 microfarads capacitor. I need a speaker enclosure to finish this project. I will make one from this leftover laminate wood floorboard. I'll use a piece of this 5 cm PVC pipe to make the base reflex tube. To fix the woofer in position, I will use 4 screws and washers. The interior will be sealed with silicone sealer. The back panel will be sealed as well. I will test the speaker with this PAM8610 Bluetooth amplifier. This amplifier board seems to be very good and I plan to use it in a future video. I will use my studio microphone now, but some quality will still be lost, especially because I don't have a soundproof room, so there will be a lot of echo. So what do you think about my homemade speaker? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and share it, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.